morning, everyone. When the GreenVis team first asked me to come uh, speak to you all, uh, I was told I might have to follow John Kerry. So one, I'm super happy that that didn't have to happen. Uh, two, I think Dylan just beat John Kerry with that suit. <laughs> Fantastic. She told me she got it from Rent the Runway, so secondhand clothing and rental, perfect. Uh, really a great pleasure to be here with you all. Thanks for, thanks for uh, taking a little bit of time to listen to what the hell I have to say. Um, yes, I cuss like a sailor, so just prepare yourselves. Um, we will dive right in. So, uh, my gig is I'm co-founder and CEO of Persephone, and I'll tell you a little bit about that after we talk about this data thing. And first of all, I just want to make sure to acknowledge that it's just fantastic to be here with you guys. I actually live locally. It's one, it's awesome to be able to come up and see you all here in my hometown. Uh, two, how cool is this? I was, I was at a dinner last night, and I have been to so many conferences in my life. I have spent and lost more money in Vegas during conferences than I can ever count. Doing it here with you all and this community is, is fantastic. It's my first green bit, so I, I was raising my hand. Um, prepare yourselves for a ton of memes and, and GIFs, GIFs, depending on what you like to call those. Uh, I also really like this one because I feel like Steve Buscemi uh, as a tech founder, not wearing a hoodie today, but sometimes when you do this gig, it's like being President Obama and the before and after pictures. You're like you, you wear the hoodie and you look a little, a little uh, techy, and then you feel like you're a very old man on the inside because it's a hard thing to do. So today I'm here to talk to you about data. The climate crisis is a data problem. Raise your hand if you have heard that or some variation of that before. We pretty much all have at this point. Uh, I guess side note: is it data or data? I'm just going to use both, and then you guys can think I have no concept of grammar. It'll be great. So, what what does this mean? I told you. Memes are coming, there's, there's many, many more coming. Um, well, that's what we're here to talk about. <laughs> that speaks for itself. Um, so I, I am mired in data all day long, every day, and it's, it's where I've spent most of my career in, in enterprise software. Again, I'll kind of, the GreenBiz team, even though I hate talking about myself genuinely, they told me you gotta talk about yourself a little bit. I'm gonna do that after. We'll talk about the data stuff first. So. The key thing to note here is when we say this sort of generic statement, the climate crisis is a data problem, it means a whole bunch of different things. And so uh, that's sort of the first thing I want to establish, right? We, it, this has become a little bit of a tropey thing that we talk about as a community. And well, I want to talk a little bit about what that means and specifically what that means in the corporate context. And my stance on this is the climate crisis is not a data problem. There's a bunch of different data problems within it, but we first should anchor ourselves around the simple fact that the climate crisis is not a data problem. It is an emissions problem. There's a bunch of different data problems that we have to tackle in order to solve this thing at scale, but I'm not gonna be the guy that sits up here and tells you, you know, hey, this is a, it's a data problem, here's a bunch of cool, smart stuff about data. I'm just gonna try to keep this as simple as possible. Because that is, at the end of the day, what we're, we're, we're talking about. It's an emissions problem, first and foremost. Data is just an asset and a tool that helps us understand and ultimately solve these challenges. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Unfortunately, it's become a little bit of a talking point to sell you stuff. By the way, we're having a 50% sale on Persephone software, so come see us on the booth outside. But in all seriousness, I. I I wager when you've heard this phrase before, it's been from some vendor who you have in your portfolio or you might have in your portfolio. And it's become this sort of thing that is this, hey, data is this like mysterious, ambiguous thing. Having data skills is a hard thing. What does that actually mean? And is somebody just trying to sell me something? That's pretty much what happens half the time. The other half of the time, it's just become this sort of tropey thing that we say, right? for better or for worse. We're pretty active on social, uh, and, and we like to kind of talk about certain things that become trendy. By the way, I'm, I am the least trendy person on the planet. I, I don't have any social media, but I see this on LinkedIn all the time. And this, this sort of catchphrase has become this sort of meaningless thing in the meanwhile. If I've offended you, sorry, I guess that's just what I do, but we really need to anchor around what does this mean how do we start talking about data more intelligently? And more importantly, how do we start using it more intelligently over time? So 
We'll talk a little bit about that. What does this actually mean? And the simple answer from my perspective is it means a whole lot of things. There's just a few examples on here, but the data problems within the climate challenge are so myriad that they can manifest themselves literally in hundreds or thousands of different permutations. And so what we need to start thinking about is really working backwards from the objective, right? And the objective for all of us is to reduce emissions. What are the many things that we have to do to get there? And we need to start thinking about data as, as these assets and these tools that serve the, the progress of each of those in the interim. So very simply, my challenge to you all is let's look at this as a corporate use case. We're not going to look at this you know, from a governmental emissions data perspective or financed emissions perspective. We're going to look at this at the corporate use case, because that's where most of the emissions, of course, are, are happening in this room. And very simply, I'd encourage you to think about the enterprise climate data problems and challenges as simply the enterprise data challenges. So I'll tell you a little bit more about my background in the past. but. Because remember, one of the buzzier things of the last decade or so was this concept of digital transformation. And you sprinkled in a little big data, and you sprinkle a little bit of AI these days. It's just all the same data sets that sit within our companies that are either underutilized, wrongly utilized, unable to be utilized. We'll talk a little bit about that. But the enterprise data challenge is so well documented for so long now, there are so many people within a company that already work this problem. But we look at climate data, we look at emissions data as this wholesale different thing. And we talk about it as if it's not the exact same data sets that come from our supply chain systems, our accounting systems, our operational systems. So we need to start looking at the climate data problem as simply the enterprise data problem. You can see these are all, I uh, guarantee you, if you're a practitioner, you have these problems, you deal with these problems. Don't try to tackle them alone. Talk, and find, talk to and find the people within the company that are already working these. They generally sit in, in IT, but they sit in other departments as well. So what do you do with this? These are 10 simple steps. Uh, I won't walk you through all of these since we're limited on time, and you, you guys will have this as a leave behind. But some really key ones to, to highlight here is, is number one, work backwards from what you're trying to accomplish. And if you're trying to accomplish everything, which is trying to get to net zero, and you go, I need to get our data estate in order to achieve net zero, you will never get there. You need to, you need to take bite-sized steps to get there. Focus on your systems of record. I, mean, I have an obvious bias here because my, the product our company has built is a system of record. But the reality is systems of record are the most critical data sources and the best way for you to solve data challenges within the company. Think about your ERP system for your financial reporting. You have a source of financial data that you can trust that's clean and that's maintained. Same thing that we need to do here. A whole bunch of other tips and tricks here. And, and what I found as a consultant in the past, I'll tell you about that, uh, as a CIO of a very large public company, these things hold true every single time. And we've all heard that adage of, if when you look at a complex problem, if you solve it sort of piece by piece, and you look at solving the individual simple pieces, then this specter of this crazy complex data thing becomes much more achievable uh, and much less scary. A couple of things I, I wanna highlight, because these things come up constantly within my customer base or prospective customer base, many of you are, are, are here today, um, is really the, the point solution fatigue, the software data fatigue, this concept of, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna get to this point where we have this all-in-one ESG solution. I'm just going to tell you right now, it's going to get a whole lot worse before it gets better. All of you are going to spend more money on sustainability software. What does that mean? It means people like me are going to build companies. They're going to build solutions. It means people at big tech companies are going to build solutions. There is going to be more and more complexity before the market consolidates and you see fewer players with higher quality products. It's just the stage of the market we're in. I also encourage you not to be, not to be overly enamored with this concept of an all-in-one solution kind of back to what I was talking about earlier, there is no all-in-one climate data or software solution. There's so many challenges that we have to solve. You will see many point solutions pop up. Ultimately, those will come back together. So that's my simple takeaway for you all, is don't look at the climate data problem as this unique snowflake problem, because guess what? The data looks the same almost everywhere you go. Look at it as the corporate data problem and really reach out to the various people within your company that are already working this across different angles. This is my favorite one. You've probably heard the story of the, of the three men and the elephant. 
And this is kind of, this sums up perfectly, I think, what we deal with every day. We look at emissions data, we look at supply chain data, we talk about engaging suppliers, we talk about setting net zero targets. We're all looking at the same thing, which is just the enterprise data estate. We just need to zoom out and look at that uh, a little bit differently. So, I'm going to go through this very quickly. So, who the hell am I to, to tell you about all this? Well, I've spent most of my career in enterprise software and complex data systems, uh, and really the early part of my enterprise software career. This is not the sum total of my career, it's just when I started focusing on the software space. Uh, I was working with some of the biggest infrastructure and data companies in the world, many of which are, are partners of mine still today. In the second part of that, I got very deep into the emissions problem and I went to work in the oil and gas industry, which was a really interesting moral quandary for me for a bit. But man, I learned a whole lot about carbon accounting and high emissions. And after that, very quickly pivoted into energy tech investments and have made a, a number of early stage and later stage uh, energy investments with the Rice Investment Group. We've done everything from renewable natural gas deals to carbon accounting software, obviously, to many, many other things related to sustainability. So over the last four years or so, I've been full time on the entrepreneurial track. Uh, I sold my first company that, that uh, I started, Umbridge to Bain Company recently. Persephone is where I spend 99.9% .9 of my time. Uh, and I'll tell you a little bit about what we do. I'm also a long time ESG and just sustainability nut. Uh, I grew up in Germany, so sustainability is very much woven into the core of, of how I was raised and into our culture uh, in Germany. So these are some, some uh, just examples of other sustainability related stuff that I do. So Wild Tonic, quick plug, is a fantastic kombucha company that's local to Arizona. You should check it out if you haven't had the chance. Um, all organic, sustainable uh, methodologies, women-owned business. MCJ, I think many of you guys are probably podcast listeners. Uh, I'm an investor in some of their funds. Uh, and then the last one is a company called Mina Families. I've invested into women-owned uh, birthing services marketplace was that one. So I, I do a whole lot of that on the side beyond sort of our, our core climate sustainability track as well. Last, uh, last couple of minutes here. Um, so what do we do at Persephone if you're not familiar with us? Um, so we're a SaaS company, as Dylan mentioned. Uh, we have built uh, really our, our first product was a carbon accounting product that some of you may know us about, uh, know us for. But we have built and are building various other carbon and climate solutions. Uh, and so really we want Persephone to be sort of one of the marquee climate software companies. Carbon accounting is just a part of that. We built tools like our Net Zero Navigator, which helps people model MAC curves and, and track and model decarbonization initiatives. Uh, we're coming out with some LCA functionality. We've got uh, reporting tools that are going to be, of course, near and dear. And one of the things we're, we're coming quickly more and more known for is our SEC expertise. And so we've got uh, some of you might have heard Christina Wyatt, who was formerly at the SEC talk yesterday, who's on our team, Emily Pierce, who was also at the SEC. So it, this year for us is very, very focused on making sure that you have the most SEC compliant solution for your carbon footprinting and your disclosures uh, that you can take to your CFO and to your investor relations team and make sure that you're in compliance from that side. With that, we are at the end. I uh, encourage you to come find us and ask any questions of where we can be helpful. You could find us outside, that is today finally palpable without rain. If you go through the doors there uh, on the outside patio, you'll see our booth there. I'll be hanging out there for a little bit. Uh, and with that, thanks for listening. Great to see you all.